Gravy is... Gravy is... Gravy is as American as you can get. It is the quintessential sauce. It's elementary. When you think of gravy, it feels warm and cozy. It's Sunday dinner, it's family, it's friends, it's comfort food. My name is Todd Coleman. I'm a creative content director at the Spruce Eats. I'm gonna make a classic turkey gravy. Today, I'm also gonna show you two variations on gravy, an uber luscious mushroom vegetarian gravy and my outrageous 24 hour gravy. Once you learn all three of these recipes, from the classic to the mushroom to the 24 hour, you're gonna really understand what it means to make and serve the best gravy. This is the most classic or fundamental of gravies, the one you need to learn first before you can stray off the path. So the first step are my drippings. Heather! Drippings are the magic leavings in the bottom of the pan that come for your turkey or chicken. You really can't make a, an intensely flavored gravy without them. These look amazing. Gold and it's rich. So you have like bits of bird and juices and just absolute rich loveliness. Do you ever just like sneak a piece of that? It's like so sweet. That is just packed full of flavor. Make sure that you watch Heather's episode of It's Elementary and see how to roast a turkey to be able to get this gold in a pan. I'm gonna send you the invoice. Send me the invoice. All right. So the first step of this is we're gonna need to sort of separate the fat from the broth. If you don't have a centrifuge, which most people don't, I have a little trick for you. Pour the broth into this bag, all right? Then I'm gonna bunch it up here. So I have all the broth and drippings and leavings from the turkey in here. You can see the fat is starting to collect at the top. So what I do is I have two measuring cups and then I'm going to click this and then let all the broth drain out. When it starts, the fat starts to come down. I quickly move it over here and this is what I use for the fat. Ingenious, I know. Ready, go. <laughs> oh, fat. It actually worked, but it's messy. So I'm gonna bring the pan over here. I like to use the cast iron pan because the bottom is thick and so the heat is distributed evenly there. So we're gonna heat it up. I'm gonna pour in my fat. So we have our fat kind of popping here. Now it's time to add a little bit of flour. I'm gonna sprinkle it over the fat. I'm gonna start to stir this to make a roux, which is really just a fancy name for a paste. The fat coats the flour, which helps it disperse in the liquid. It's okay if it's a little bit lumpy. All right, I'm gonna pour in our broth, our drippings, our loveliness that came from the pan. Thank you, Heather. This would not be the same without it. So I like to add a little bit at first and start whisking. Smells really, 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 really good. It's starting to bubble. I'm whisking in our paste, our roux. You can see it coming together. It's very, very, very thick. All right, so like, I have a little bit of broth here on the side that is just basically store-bought. I'm gonna use this to loosen it up a little bit. You have to always have this. If you make your gravy in the morning for Thanksgiving, and you're serving it at three or God forbid at six o'clock, when you reheat it, it's going to be very thick. Whisk while it comes to a boil. Okay, so you see I'm starting to push it through. And it's leaving a little bit of a path and it thickens enough to sort of swipe your finger through and you see that it's held its line. So we're good to go. This is an essential test. The next step is we want to season it. So salt and pepper, those are our basic seasonings. But be careful with this because if you're using drippings from a bird, all of that salt and seasoning is going to go into the bottom of the pan. So I tasted it first to see if it even needs salt. Often it doesn't. I'm gonna stir it up and now I'm going to taste the sauce. Wow. I don't say this lightly, this is kind of like my grandma's gravy, right? Which is old school home cooking, which is very hard to get these days. Drippings are the key to this gravy and you need to be able to roast a whole bird in order to get them. Don't use one of those disposable pans that's very thin at the bottom because your drippings will all burn from that. So this is our basic turkey gravy. And now we're gonna move on to a vegetarian mushroom gravy. The big question here is, how do you make something as flavorful as the meat-based one? And the answer to that, mushrooms. These are nutty, woodsy, packed with flavor, and that word's gonna come up again, umami packed, right? Get the pan nice and hot. We're gonna chop up an onion. I do a little V-cut to take the root out. 
which makes it easier to slice. This is my technique for doing. I start sort of as a V and I move over. This is a basic technique, okay? Slicing, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Knock it over. Boom, 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 right? They just all fall apart because of that V cut. So easy. So now I'm going to take butter, throw it into the pan. The butter you want to use because it's full of flavor. The milk solids are going to start to caramelize and brown and mimic the pound drippings, you know, from the meat-based one. You're gonna have some people who prefer this gravy, right? Starting the brown there, we want that. I'm gonna add the onions. Let's get those sizzling. I like to season as I go. Salt, salt, salt. Pepper mill. You see these little brown bits here? That's from the butter. Again, the milk solids are caramelizing and it's mimicking the drippings in the bottom of the pan. Keep that going, rip roaring heat. Next, we're gonna chop up the mushrooms. I'm using cremini mushrooms. Do you know what cremini mushrooms are? You know portobellos? These are the baby ones before they grow. I have this technique of once I start to chop and I make a flat end, I'll flip it over on that flat end and get those babies into the pan. Sprinkling, sprinkling, sprinkling. I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning. I'm gonna tell you the secret about mushrooms. You ever had canned mushrooms? They're kind of bloated and pale, right? That's what will happen to your mushrooms if you add them and start stirring like crazy. You really just wanna leave them alone. It's so hard, even for me, not to stir, but you've got to have some patience with this, right? Because we're building flavor here. You know, this is the point where you're gonna be like, oh, I need to stir, oh, I need to stir. Don't, 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 don't. Give yourself a couple more seconds. Fight that urge. I'm gonna sprinkle on my poultry seasoning here, right? Poultry seasoning, that sounds like a pretty weird thing to add to a vegetarian gravy, right? Well, there's no poultry in here. But what is in here? They're herbs of Thanksgiving. Sage, marjoram, thyme, oregano. It is a secret weapon for me in the kitchen. And now we're gonna shake the pan and we're gonna flip. See, see what I'm talking about here? Brown and caramelized. The parts that look a little dark are gonna become light brown once you add the liquid. All right, next step. We're gonna add our flour. We're making a roux again, but with salt ingredients in there. Same thing. Go ahead and start stirring. It's gonna to start to get a little clumpy. The flour is adhering to the mushrooms and the onions. So you can see here that we have a mess of mushrooms and onions. We're starting to get bits on the bottom of the pan. Now I'm gonna add the liquid. What I like to do is add a little bit first, start to stir it, loosen the roux a little bit, not add it all at once. Right, I'm stirring, starting to thicken. You see that there? Really lovely stuff here, really lovely stuff. I'm gonna add my soy sauce now. Soy sauce, you know, fermented soybeans. This is a friend in the kitchen. You can use it in so many things. It's one of my secret ingredients to my uh, marinara sauce. I'm pouring a little bit more in. You can see it starting to come together. Look at that, wow. Again, you're gonna let this come to a boil to let the flour thicken properly. If you just think it's done, once it looks sort of thick, you're not there yet. And it's gonna sort of have a raw taste and it's just not gonna be the experience that you want. I'm stirring really just to, to get up those yummy bits that caramelized on the bottom of the pan. The bubbles are starting to pop up. Pop, 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 pop. That's a professional term. So while that's happening, two finishing moves. Number one, a pat of cold butter. And that will taste very different than the cooked butter in this. Okay, and I'm gonna swirl to incorporate it. This is called mounting in butter, right? It will give a smooth, glossy finish. If it just melts in, it'll be kind of greasy and broken at the top. Next thing is the lemon, fresh lemon juice, people. All right, I'm gonna hold the halved lemon up like this so that when the juice runs through my fingers, but the seeds hopefully or fall, fall into the palm of my hand instead of the food. All gravies have super long cooked flavors, so you want to finish it with something that will brighten it up. You want it to hit a lot of different notes, right? So here we're gonna add some salt, of course some pepper. Final test, it's called the nappe test. Nappe means the coat in French. See, that line there, it holds. That way we know it's going to lightly coat our turkey, our stuffing, our mashed potatoes. This is our mushroom vegetarian gravy. I like to make two gravies at Thanksgiving. This one is especially good for the darker, richer meats like the drumstick or the thigh, whereas the classic with its long cooked flavors from the drippings will really super enhance the breast meat. 
you know, that typically no matter what you do is kind of dry. So next, so we're moving on to the 24 hour gravy. What is this? It's the pull out all the stops gravy. That's just gonna impress the hell out of everyone. What's going on here? We have a million different ingredients. Exactly, it's mission impossible here, right? The first step is when you make a stock, you wanna use bones, right? We're not gonna go out and get bones in the supermarket. So we start off with what? Chicken wings. These look great. They're gonna add a ton of body to our broth, which is the beginning of our gravy. Okay, moving over here, all right? Got our cocotte or our stock pot. We're putting our chicken wings in our fat. Don't worry about it. Everything should go in there. And look at these pan drippings. I'm doing right by you guys, okay? We're gonna deglaze those with what? Red wine. Pop that on there. You wanna scrape these bits up into the wine. You can also just add water or broth or any liquid. Typically, you wanna put this over a gas flame to help release it and help it boil, but you don't really need to do that. We're building a lot of flavor here. All right, I'm gonna pour that in with the, the wings. Okay, now we're gonna start our pinsage. What the heck is a pinsage? Well, it's just another crazy French term for mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, celery, um, all caramelized in a pan with a bunch of ooey gooey goodness. And that's gonna form the aromatic base of our 24 hour gravy, all right? So we have a pan here. I'm gonna start with some bacon, why? Bacon's delicious. Again, I'm telling you, I'm putting everything in this. I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to help this bacon render. Wow, this is smelling amazing. So we've got that going. I'm gonna take my carrots and I'm gonna roughly chop them. I like doing like a little roll cut where I just cut down the middle, make these kind of like oblique shapes. Throw those in. I'm not worried about the bacon being totally ready because this is gonna cook for a long time. I'm gonna take a head of garlic as well. I'm just gonna split that in half. All this stuff is gonna get strained out at the end. Tons of herbs here. Thyme, fresh thyme, rosemary, piney, resiny, bay leaf, slicing up our onions. All right, throwing in the onions, stirring this up, getting it going, getting it brown. While this is cooking down, I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. Tomato paste is a concentrate. It's gonna make everything dark and rich. All right, so I'm stirring this up. You see it's starting to brown. It's starting to cook down, okay? If memory serves me, again, with French, pincé means to caramelize, so a pincage is the thing that's caramelized. But let me, know, let me know in the comments if I got that right. Something isn't right here. I think I missed some. The celery, oh my goodness. All these ingredients are there for a reason. So leave one of them out, it won't be the same. Wow, see that jammy? See that jammy caramelized bit right there? That's what you're looking for. What are we gonna do next? We're gonna take a whole bottle of wine. We're gonna add the whole thing. That's right, the whole bottle of wine is gone. It's in the pensage. We're gonna start boiling this down. You don't wanna use cheap wine or wine that you wouldn't wanna drink. You know, this is gonna make a big difference. So this is gonna start to simmer and this is gonna start to reduce. We wanna get it to the point where it's like kind of almost syrupy. Okay, the pinsage with the red wine is taking a little bit of time to reduce. I'm putting an empty pan on the burner and heating it screechingly hot. And I'm gonna pour our syrupy pinsage in there. It's gonna reduce really quickly. Yeah, so this is starting to get really syrupy and yummy, okay? This is gonna go in with our wings. All right, I'm gonna pour this in. Next step, I have dried shiitakes here. We're gonna add those in. We're gonna add some bay leaf, right? Then we're gonna make a big bouquet garni, which is just like parsley, tarragon, thyme, sage, fresh herbs. And I'm gonna tie them all together. That's gonna go in here, all right? Now we're gonna add water to create our broth or stock. It needs to go like four inches above the surface. I'm gonna cover, bring it to a boil. All right, so we brought our delicious multi-layered broth stock that will eventually be our gravy up to a boil. Okay, I'm gonna turn down the heat and we're gonna simmer this for eight hours. When this is done, after eight hours, you can cheat maybe do six hours, you're gonna let it cool, you're gonna put it in the fridge, let it sit overnight. So here we have our broth or our stock that we put in the fridge overnight, then we took it out, peeled back the fat, got rid of that or saved it for another use, and we had to heat it up a little bit so that we could strain it. So I've improvised here with some cheesecloth that's wet 
which makes it easier to strain. So we're gonna mash this down to release the liquid. We're pushing it through, right? You can see it dripping in here. All right, we'll put our solids over here. So I'm gonna bring this over to the stove to heat up. Now we're going to make our gumbo roux. What's that? It's basically the roux I've showed you how to make already, but we're gonna cook it for a long time until it becomes the consistency of peanut butter or almond butter, okay? We have a miniature cast iron skillet here. We're gonna bring it onto the heat. We're going to add our butter. We're gonna melt that down. Again, we don't care if it browns, it's gonna be browning during this process. Swirl the butter. Just waves of splendid butter pleasure right here, just folding onto itself. Fantastic. So I'm gonna dump in the flour, sprinkle that over the top. All right, stir that in. You see here, the roux starts to look a little bit like our basic or our fundamental gravy here. It almost looks like a caramel sauce. All right, so we've been cooking this for about 10 minutes. You can see it's really gotten the consistency of peanut butter or almond butter. All right, I'm gonna move this off and I'm gonna move our strained broth over. Boom. So now I'm going to take our gumbo roux and I'm going to pour it into our broth. This is basically the gravy of your dreams. So now I'm going to turn this down and let it simmer a little bit just to thicken up. All right, look at this. This looks luscious, right? This has 24 ingredients, but let's not forget the other ingredients, okay? The ones that are always there helping us out during Thanksgiving time and love, okay? We put a lot of time and love in this. So we're not done yet. We want to balance this gravy. It's a delicate, precise thing. First, we're gonna do some mounting of cold butter, which is a technique I've already taught you. Again, the butter must be cold. All right, that's looking great. All right, now we're gonna really up this, plus, 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 turn it up to 11, all right? So I'm gonna take some Frank's hot sauce, a couple of drops, don't go crazy. I'm gonna take a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of sherry vinegar, okay? Again, just a couple of drops. Don't forget the salt, pepper, okay? It looks great. Now it's time for the taste test. Oh, that is so good. What's Thanksgiving if you can't show off for your friends and family, right? This is gonna knock them over the head. Thanks so much for joining me today on our gravy extravaganza. I've showed you how to make it three ways. Number one, the basic gravy, roux and drippings. Number two, vegetarian mushroom gravy, strong backbone from the sauteed mushrooms. And number three, the show-stopping 24 hours, 24 ingredients, it's elementary. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to The Spruce Seats for more It's Elementary episodes and more great cooking videos on every subject. Mm -hmm.